So we're back to our original question. How do we use least common denominator to change these fractions to have the same denominator? That's what we're going to try next. So here I have the fractions 3 fifths and 3 sevenths. The denominators are not the same. I'm going to start by finding the least common denominator of 5 and 7 in my box here. So I'm going to start with 7. I know that 5 goes into 35, so now when I'm listing out my multiples of 5, I'm going to find my match. So the least common denominator for 3 fifths and 3 sevenths is 35. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reveal a chart that's going to help me make some new equivalent fractions. And you guys have learned how to make equivalent fractions in a previous video. You know that to make an equivalent fraction, you're going to take the original fractions and just multiply or divide them by 1 or something that equals 1. So let's go ahead and start by putting the original fractions in the first boxes here. So I started with 3 fifths and 3 sevenths as my original fractions. I know that my least common denominator for these two fractions is 35. So I'm going to go all the way over to my ending fractions and put in 35 because that's what I want to end with. Now it's just a matter of how do we get to 35. So 5 times what gets us to 35? 5 times 7 is going to get us to that 35. Whatever I do to the denominator of this fraction, I also have to do to the numerator. So 7 over 7 is the same as multiplying this fraction by 1. 3 times 7 is going to give us 21 in our numerator. Down below, how do I get from 7 to 35? I'm going to multiply by 5. I'm also going to multiply by 5 in my numerator. 3 times 5 is 15. So my two new fractions that have common denominators are 21 35ths and 15 35ths. Now that I have the same denominator and I've changed these into equivalent fractions for 3 fifths and 3 sevenths, now I could add or subtract these fractions if asked to. Let's try another one. We have 5 sixths and 2 fifteenths. So I'm just going to first find the least common denominator of 6 and 15. So I'm going to put our 6 and our 15 here. I'm going to start with my larger number, and I can stop right away here because I know that 6 can go into 30. So if I go up here and start listing my multiples of 6, I've reached 30. So the denominator that we're going to use for these two fractions is 30. So if we go over to our chart, let's put 30 in as our final denominator. And let's go ahead and list our original fractions, 5 sixths and 2 fifteenths. And then let's figure out how we're going to ch change these fractions, how we're going to make equivalent fractions by trying to get over to our 30. So ask ourselves, what times 6 will get us to 30? 5. So I'm going to do the same thing in my numerator. 5 times 5 is 25. Coming down here, what times 15 is going to give us 30? 2. So I'm going to do the same thing in my numerator. 2 times 2 is 4. So my two new fractions are 25 thirtieths and 4 thirtieths. Same denominators now, so I can go ahead and add or subtract these fractions if needed. Here's our last problem for today. We have 3 fifths and 7 tenths. I'm going to circle my denominators, and I'm going to go ahead and find the least common denominator. So by putting 5 and 10. When I start listing my multiples of 5, I'm going to realize right away that the thing that both of these numbers have in common, the multiple they both have in common, is 10. That one was really quick and easy. So revealing my chart, I know that my least common denominator for these two fractions is going to be 10. So I'm going to place 10 in my final fractions. Go back to the original fractions, 3 fifths and 7 tenths and move myself over. So 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 2 is 6. 10 times 1 is 10. And 7 times 1 is 7. My two new fractions are 6 tenths and 7 tenths.